Earlier, I would like to think that I'm a good representation of like the standard American. Well, I'm probably a no, I'm above standard, but I mean we are like, both above average. I know, but, I mean, like, <laughs> but we know what the people want. We are for the people. Like I think we we know what's like cool, what's hip. We know demographics. We know where and where not to shop. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so basically, Ross is trying to say that we're big fat snobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying we're relatable. <laughs> Welcome to episode two of My Weekly Bitch. I'm your host, Ross. This is Alex. Um, first topic of today is airline etiquette. This weekend, I flew out of the country to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Out to, of the country. Out of the country. You need a passport to fly to New Mexico. Um, to attend one of my friend's weddings. Um, I left Thursday night, and I got on the plane, and I took my typical window seat. And then a few minutes later, these women came and asked if the seats next to me were empty. And I said, yeah. And they proceeded to sit there, which is fine. And then a few minutes later, I looked around the plane and I saw that the whole back half of the plane was empty. And they sat in the two seats next to me. I was fucking pissed off. I was livid. I didn't understand why I felt violated. It was terrible. He was so upset, it completely distracted him from Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was reading Fifty Shades of Grey and it did distract me. But I just couldn't understand, like, the whole plane is empty. The entire back half of the plane could have blown up and fallen off, and no one would have died. I want to know what their, like, thinking was. Like, oh, half the plane is empty. Oh, look, a cute guy reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Let's go sit down next to him. Yeah, because that wasn't the first clue that he was gay. I don't think that reading Fifty Shades of Grey means that I'm gay. I, I haven't although... seen another guy with that book in hand. Have you? Yeah, because who walks around with the Fifty Shades of Grey in their hand? Well, A, what, I have what, no desire What person to do you, do you, 95% of the people walking on the streets are not carrying books in their hand. Okay, that, but what it, they're not in airports. Literally every bookstore in airports, there was like a whole news story about it. They were sold out of the book. So obviously, people were buying. So obviously men were probably buying them too. Well, regardless, I was wearing my neon pink jacket though, so that's but I just, I don't understand. I was really upset on their thinking. And I guess I should have gotten up and moved, but I didn't because I'm lazy. What do you need a basis for? <laughs> don't fuck yourself. <laughs> well, like mother, like daughter, Lindsay Lohan has gotten into another Twitter feud with the newly fell from the graces actress Amanda Bynes. I find it so incredibly hypocritical that Lindsay Lohan is calling or tweeting shit towards Amanda Bynes because she was caught smoking pot and has been in a few car accidents she's, and has been drunk driving. Because it's not like Lindsay has been, like, the pinnacle of mor you morality. Know, morality. Yes. But she's just jealous because she had to go to jail and Amanda Bynes didn't. That's the basis of the Twitter. Feed. Lindsay went to jail for two hours! And not that, I mean, if I went to jail for two hours, I would be raped and murdered, so... Well... <laughs> I'd put up a good fight in prison, but my point being that I just, why would she, I would think that as Lindsay, who's someone who's trying to revitalize her career, she would maybe like tweet words of advice or help, like it gets better or, you know, promises rehab and now Switch to cocaine. Yeah. Methamphetamines. <laughs> or you could be like people in New Mexico and do crystal meth. But I just, I think it's funny that, uh, I mean, why start the feud over Twitter? That's just dumb. And it's well, bad PR for one of them. Earlier this week, I stumbled on a list of 13 <laughs> interest cruises you never knew existed. And I found them rather amusing, so I insisted we put them in the show. The first two include Malt Shop Memories and the Barbie Premium Experience. See, I think Malt Shop Memories seems like, yeah, it could be pretty boring. But I guess I kind of like the old time feel. But Barbie Premium Experience, I picture like a bunch of hot blondes and a bunch of like hot guys that are representing Ken dolls. So I think I'd be for that. And so it would be rocks on a cruise with a bunch of 10 year olds no, and they're like morbidly no. obese mothers. So it'd be like Ross, Honey Boo Boo, <laughs> her mom, and other people from Nebraska. Not that there's anything wrong with being from Nebraska. York, Nebraska is where it's at, by the way. The fast lane, best far. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, Mark Shot Memories, Barbie Creamy Experience. The DreamWorks Experience, which is the next cruise that I will be on because I want to go on a Madagascar cruise. Then there's the Blake Shelton Cruise. I, that could be entertaining, but what do you do? Like, how well, can okay, the whole thing be Blake Shelton? Like, what? You go on a cruise with Blake Shelton. 
Who is just a huge drunk. It'd be so much Oh, fun. I would totally support that cruise. Anything that, any cruise that has alcohol, I'm on. Yeah, plus country western. So the Blake Shelton cruise definitely <laughs> contrasts the next cruise. <laughs> which is the Mark Twain tribute cruise, which had the most hilarious photo on the, on the, the post. Because it's people sitting at a table and there's all these like, gospel people. No, that's the Gospel Lunch Cruise. I'm still on Mark Twain. Oh, okay. There, there's a bunch of people dressed up, and they look exactly like Colonel Sanders. So. <laughs> I literally think I just blacked out for like 30 seconds of this broadcast. <laughs> because... Because I... Okay. Okay, okay. Anyway, so yeah, it's a bunch of people who dress up like Colonel Sanders. Then there's the Gospel Lunch Cruise, which is pretty normal if you like air into church and hallelujah. No, but I think it'd be like, to me, my biggest pet peeve is when I leave the country to go to New Mexico... Whenever we go out to eat, there's always like mariachi bands that come and play around the table. La, la, and I find la, it to be the most obnoxious thing ever. God, I'm like choking on my own burp. <laughs> but, so I could not imagine being on a gospel cruise where like you're sitting there and all of a sudden all these people <laughs> surround you and they're all singing like, Hallelujah. Or I don't really know. Jesus, take the wheel, maybe. Then, this is the one that caught my eye the most. Saw the horror cruise. Because obviously you want to go on a cruise with the cast of Saw and swimming in a jacuzzi full of hypodermic needles. <laughs> like That's actually, I would go on that one. No. The Saw horror cruise. I think it'd be kind of fun. It'd be like, because you'd never know what's going to happen. So you'd always be really angst out. I would just get really high. Or take a lot of Xanax or something. Oh my god, I'd like lock myself in the closet because I wouldn't want to go anywhere. I hate horror things. Last year I went to, uh, what is it? The Halloween Horror Nights. Oh yeah, at Universal. I literally came home and was like, I'm not asleep for like 24 hours. I'm such a baby. I could just imagine you on the soccer cruise, like, <laughs> waddling down the hall. I don't waddle, I'm not that bad. My god. <laughs> And it's like some like guy in chainsaw is like I hate the chain I hate chainsaws. I really scared. Okay. One time slide. I got a the scrapbooking scrap cruise. cruise. I don't know what the scrapbooking cruise would be like. A bunch of virgins. A bunch of old people. There's the Paula Dean cruise. Where you go and gain twenty pounds. And gain diabetes. Because they literally just serve you six. This next one sounds like a lesbian cruise. Girlfriends, Girlfriends magic, magic and, and quilting, quilting cruise. cruise. The next cruise is the Vamps at Sea Cruise, which is also known as the Twihard Cruise, because it's just a bunch of people dressed up as Ella and Bella, Ella and don't of Bella. Ella and Bedward. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ella, eh, eh, eh. Anyway, that sounds dumb. I wouldn't like that. Although I would like to see hot men covered in glitter. I could just go to West Hollywood for that. Yes. Or Occidental College. <laughs> Where all the gays go. <laughs> <laughs> all the closet gays go. Um, then there's the Kiss Cruise, spelled with a K. <laughs> I don't know what this says. And then there's the um, Kenny G Cruise, because <laughs> everyone needs a little more saxophone in their lives. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I just get these laughing fits and I don't know what to do about it. Anywho, we usually like to end our show with Bitch of the Week. Um, this week's Bitch of the Week... Mm. This week's Bitch of the Week is... Chris Jenner! Jenner! <laughs> I still hate that bitch. <laughs> Alex is just on this huge hate streak towards Chris Jenner because... And I don't even pick the Bitches of the Week. <laughs> They pick themselves. 